Welcome to yet another video tutorial. In this video today, we're going to be looking at installing the ever popular Yoast SEO plugin. Now, the reason you wanted to get this plugin is for SEO purposes. It's by far one of the best plugins, most comprehensive plugins that deal with SEO for WordPress. So that being said, let's jump right into it. As usual, go on the left hand side, go to plugins, add new. Up at the top right hand corner, we can type Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T space S-E-O. And right here in the upper left hand corner by Team Yoast, we want to install this Yoast SDO plugin. And when that's finished, we can go ahead and activate it. In our plugins list, let's scroll down to the bottom and we see Yoast SEO here. Go ahead and click on settings. And you'll see right away here that there is a premium version of Yoast, which we're not going to deal with. Everything that we need from Yoast is free, so we don't have to worry about paying for that. And then right up here, you'll see the first time SEO configuration. So let's go ahead and do the configuration wizard here. Okay, so the first step in this is if your site is ready to go and be indexed by Google. If not, you want to click on this option B here until you have content on your website. Because I already have four blog posts, I'm going to say yes for option A. Click on next. Now it's asking us what does your website represent? Is it a blog, an online shop, a news channel? You're going to have to pick something here that is representative of your website. For me, I'm going to pick a blog. This next page asks us if we are an organization or a person. Now again, depending on what your blog represents, you're going to pick the right option. I'm going to say it's an organization in my case just because the blog itself is about serial and not about the person writing the articles about the serial. So I'm going to keep this selected with organization. The organization is called Serial Guru. It's asking us for a logo. So we already uploaded a logo in the previous video. So we're going to go ahead and use that same exact logo. That looks good. I actually don't have any social media accounts set up for my Serial Guru blog just yet. In the future, if I decide to do that, I can come back into this plugin and add them here. So I'm going to leave these blank for now. Again, if you do have social accounts for your blog, Go ahead and fill those in right here. Okay, this is asking us about the search engine visibility. Do you want Google to show your posts in search results? Do you want Google to show your pages in search results? By default, I would keep these selected for yes. Does or will your site have multiple authors? For me, no, it's just gonna be me writing all the content. So we have the website name here. This is asking us how we want to show our web page in Google search results. So um, we know the website name is Serial Guru. That looks good. You could pick any one of these. I think the default's just fine. This is asking us if we want to sign up for the newsletter. No, thank you. And then this final page is probably just like a sales page. If you're interested, definitely check it out. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. And that looks good. We are done with that configuration wizard, so we can go ahead and close that. Now, just real quick, let's go through some of these features for Yoast. Uh, keep all of these on. By default, that looks good. You want all of this stuff enabled. Actually, one thing I want to point out here is the fact that Yoast is generating an XML sitemap for you. And that is really critical because an XML sitemap is basically a listing of all your posts and pages on your blog or website. And this is important for Google in order to have an exact idea of what content is on your website. So normally Google would crawl your pages by checking out your links, going from one page to another to another via all the links on the pages. But if you have this document called an XML sitemap on your website, it makes it super easy for Google to do so and pretty much essentially guarantees that your web pages will be indexed by Google. So let's go ahead and open up a new tab here and check out our XML sitemap. It's just going to be located at your domain name slash sitemap.xml. So go ahead and check that out. And like I said, this is generated by Yoast SEO. It has these individual sitemaps within this main sitemap. And you'll see here this post sitemap is right here and it has a hyperlink and it shows us all of our pages on our website. So we have the home page, Oreos, Kicks, Crave, and Smack Serial pages. Okay, let's get out of that and continue on. We're not going to deal with webmaster tools, so let's go down to search appearance. And so in here we can configure how we want our home page to appear in Google. So what I'm going to do is actually change this around a little bit. I really only want the site title to show up for the search results in Google just for our home page. And then I'm going to type in a quick description in the meta description, which is really critical as well. Okay, so we got that meta description done. You can always come back in here and edit that. Everything else looks good down here. We have the logo set up and very good. So we'll go ahead and save those changes. And then content types over here, like we said, we want to show posts and search results. Uh, I think we'll show the date as well. That just means in a Google search result, we'll show the date that the blog post was published. This is how we want the title of the blog post to appear. 
So down here, we're just going to do the title followed by the separator and then the site title. So in our Smack Serial example from a previous video, it would be nine surprising facts about Smack Serial followed by a dash followed by Serial Guru. And then down here for the pages, um, we're going to go ahead and keep this off for the pages. Pages, So pages versus posts. Pages are more permanent content on your website. So for example, if you have a contact form or your home page, or if you have an about page, those are going to be considered pages. Whereas up here, blog posts usually do have the date associated with them and are more um, consistent in new content that can be updated over time. So that looks good here. We'll go ahead and save that. Let's go on over to media. We'll leave that enabled. Here it's asking us if we want to show categories in search results. So if you have a blog with multiple different categories like um, travel blog posts and personal blog posts and finance blog posts, do you want each of those pages representing those categories to show up in search results? For me, I'm going to say no. This looks good for archives. We can leave that disabled by default. Breadcrumbs, we don't want those either. And RSS, we're not even going to worry about that. Okay, go ahead and save those changes again. Okay, and that's about it for the configuration of the Yoast SEO plugin. Let's go into a blog post and see what this plugin actually does for us. So we'll use our Smack Serial example and click on that. And once this page loads, you'll see the content of our blog post here. And when we go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see this Yoast SEO plugin that we have installed. So right off the bat, it's saying that the readability analysis according to Yoast is good. It has a green smiley face here, so that's really good. And Yoast comes up with this readability analysis score by looking at these individual points down here. So there's this flesh reading E score, which is just a way to um, scan the text of your post and see if it is hard to read or easy to read. So I got a 74.2 on that. So that means it's pretty easy to read. It looks like we have a good variety of sentences in our blog post. The content itself is distributed well throughout the post, meaning that there's less than 300 words under each header, which is good. That breaks it up really nice. The paragraph length's great. The sentence length is great. And we use enough transition words. So the only problem here is that a lot of our sentences are passive voice. They recommend a 10% maximum for passive voice sentences. We have 19.3, but that's okay because we have all these other positive results. So they balance out, I guess, and we still have an overall readability score that is good. Now this other box down here, the SEO analysis, uh, it looks like that's not even a score yet because we have some stuff to fill out. And in order to have an SEO analysis score, you need to first come up here and fill out your focus keyword. So in this particular article, we are focusing on the keyword phrase smacks serial. And once we fill that in, we can go back down here and we see that our SEO analysis score has turned to green. It looks like we still have to write a meta description. So up here in this edit snippet page, this is kind of how you're going to appear in search results for Google. Like I said, we have the title followed by a dash followed by the name of the website. Um, this is where the meta description is going to go. We don't have one, so we have to write one. So we can click on edit snippet and then scroll down here and type our meta description for this particular blog post. And there we go. I've written my meta description for this blog post and you'll see I added these three dots at the end. It's just a way to, you know, have enough characters in your meta description. But at the same time, if somebody's reading through this up here in Google, they're going to see this sentence and then they're going to see dig frog dot dot dot, which means there's a sentence that they need to finish reading. It's just a way to entice the reader, kind of tease them into knowing that there's more content in your blog post and they're going to be more likely to click on the link then. So that's pretty good. If we go back up here, we see that our readability score is good. Our SEO score is good. That means we are ready to publish. I think the only thing I have to do in this case, since I added the meta description, is click on this update button. And that will be reflected in the blog post that is live on my website. So that's about it for this video tutorial. We learned how to install the Yoast SEO plugin and configure it. We also learned why we want the Yoast SEO plugin. Not only does it help us write better content, but it also helps us appear the way we want to appear in search results in a way that Google can easily understand. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.